I'm Mark Silver. I'm a photographer and author in Carmel, California. Now, our guest again <laughs> is the one and only premier headshot and portrait photographer in New York City, Peter Hurley. And he's known for how he captures genuine expressions in his portraits and headshots. Peter, welcome back to Advancing Your Photography. It's so great to have you back with us. Hey, Mark, man, I, thanks for inviting me back. That was cool the first time. I'm ready to chat a little bit more. We're going to pull the curtain back and see what goes on behind the curtain with Peter Hurley. Where do we start? So how about the squinch? I'm curious. I think I understand it, but I want to hear it from you. What is the squinch and how do we use it? And why should photographers know about it? Uh, you know, it's funny. The, the first thing I realized when I first started photographing and when I was a model, I didn't know anything about squinting your eyes or squinching or anything. I think it's just when the photographer made me comfortable, I looked that way. Yeah. And I thought, you know, the models always look cool. And um, so when I when I picked up a camera, uh, all the actors in the headshots in New York were all wide-eyed. And they just looked out to lunch to me. They just looked out of it. I hated it. And I was like, I don't want to shoot like that. What's wrong? I got to make these people squint or something. So I would say squint like every shoot, like thousands. I mean, all day long, all day long. And then um, I did these videos of squinting. And then I was like, it's not really squinting because squinting's too much. And then I think my daughter one day said, Dad, it's a squinch. A and I squinch. was like, that's it. That's it. I was like, that's it. And then I defined it. So a squinch is narrowing the distance between your lower eyelid and your pupil. Uh, that's what I, that's what I coined it as. And what that does is it creates confidence in the eye. But the thing is, is that the, that we do it on a daily basis, anything that we're confident at, or if we're feeling confidence internally, externally, it shows up through a squinch. It's the same way as internally. If we feel fear externally, our eyes widen. Well, can uh, you show can me, stop. like last time you had me sit up properly and, you know, put the string through my head and that sort of thing. Yeah. We can you show me how to squinch? Jaw, ankles. You're we already on... squinchy. I probably have you. So you're pretty, pretty, you're pretty squinchy already. That's squinting. Don't overdo it. You don't That's want that. wide eyed, right? You don't want that. Leave your brows alone. Don't touch the brows. Uh, Relax don't... the brow. You some brow pressure yeah so what, what are we moving go. the bottom now, isolating your lower eyelid and wow. if i were you uh if i were you your left eye you have a eye slight eye difference most humans our eyes are not uh, completely even so yeah. we have a slight eye difference your left eye is a little bit larger than your right so i wouldn't even squint your right eye just do independent squinching all you got to do is isolate that abicularis oculi underneath your eyeball Easier on said than left done. eye, which is muscle that surrounds it. You're doing it though. There we go. You're so just the left eye. The thing is just the left. And the thing is that you're you're overdoing it a touch. So settle yeah. down. Okay. So this is what happens. I teach this and then photographers go hog wild with people and then they and look they squinty. <laughs> it doesn't look like human expression. So that doesn't work. Like see you just laughed for real and your eyes got squinchy. Yeah, That's oh, I the get real it. Deal. When we laugh, we're squinchy. When we're laughing so, for real. But it um, is something you kind of have to practice. It's like a yoga exercise or something. you got to isolate yeah, those yeah. muscles. You can isolate it. Yeah, I have very good control over my lower eyelid muscles. The one thing that you don't want to do Let me see is, you do uh, it. Let me see you do it. I'm a little bit far away from the camera, but let me take my... Let me just take a look. look. I don't know how well you can see me, but if, yeah, we if got I was uncertain, I'd be like, I'd look at the camera like this which is not the normal way that I talk to anybody. And yeah. I have small eyes. So squinching would be, or a relaxed eye would be that. This. this is a relaxed eye. Okay. This is, yeah, this is a relaxed eye. And then, which I could shoot, but a squinching would be more like this. And it's just the lower lids up. I get it. Yeah, there you go. You've really got that. Yeah. Can you, and then uh, you can squinch them? This is muscle memory, and you got to practice. Just but really, the thing is, is that our subconscious controls it for us. So if you're worried out there about walking around without a squint, you'd never do because your subconscious does it for you. So you, when you take portraits and headshots, you coach your subject on doing this, right? And they walk in the room, yeah. and you I'll, say, "Okay." I won't shoot. With, yeah, I don't shoot without them squinching usually, because I don't want them to look fearful, and if they're not squinching, they look scared. 
like when I showed you before a relaxed eye, if they have a relaxed eye, I'll shoot them, but it's normally I want the squinch. If they're to more toward the serious side, if they're laughing, they're squinching anyway, so it's fine. So negative squinching is uh, basically what I call a brain freeze or, you know, Sampaku is a, uh, when you see the white in three corners of somebody's eyes, and that's right. uh, from, uh, friends told me about that, and it's crazy to see that because people are nuts when they have that in their eye. Uh, or I call it out to lunchitis, and it looks like this. Ooh, not so good. Not a good look. Ah! That's terrible. That's like ultimate it, deer in the headlight. If anybody out there took these pictures, I apologize because I just pulled them off of Google. This guy's not, not this guy's negative squinching. Yeah, the camera's not exactly perfect with the screen. She just looks miserable. Ah. This guy's not, not in good shape. All of these are negative squinchers. Mm. Uh, and just miserable and not, not cool. Um, you know, so to me, that's what I was seeing. And I always tell people you need a stimulus package. And I and I always look at like celebrities, and they always look cool. You can see the level of coolness in these. Yeah. Johnny Depp, dig that squinch. Yeah. James Franco. Now, you can do the independent squinching, and that's that's lower isolation of the lower eyelid muscle. I actually have a squinch book. I don't know if they're all in my studio, and it sits next to me, and I go through these, and I talk about these pictures, and I'll bring them out and, and show them to clients and and um, and talk about why I'm discussing them. This one's one of my favorites. I don't know if you can see it, but there is one dog in the shot that's cooler than the other two. Oh, yeah, I see the dog. Because the, the, the one on the bottom and the one on the top are deer in the headlights. This yeah. guy in the middle has got his cool together. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Now, I have another question for you. Subset. Oh, no. Do you do you coach people on smiling? Because I noticed like celebrities. You look at Tom Cruise, man. He just he knows how to smile. I mean, this guy has got a megawatt smile. But you know, I, I even for myself, when I get behind the camera, and I try to smile. It looks weird, you know. My it's not a natural look. So how do you, is there a coaching process you go through with that as well? Well, there is no natural big smile unless you're actually laughing about something yeah or you're really good at speaking. Uh, the other thing is that if you squinch without a smile you look like a real prick so you gotta Ooh, yeah. you gotta really you can't you know you gotta be careful with that one even a little smile right otherwise you look like you're just kind of beady-eyed on people right yeah you need a you need a hint of a smile, hint uh, of a unless, smile. even if you're being like well, I always run the gamut with people's expression when I'm working with people or I try to. So I'm doing uh, with I like to do it with everybody with with actors. Definitely. You know, every you can do in negative uh, facial expressions like for me, one of my favorites is sneaky, which is kind of towards the negative side and cocky, which is then it has a little smirk, devious, those types of words I like uh, where on the other side, it's like, you know, I put up this range of expression gauge, and if you're all the way over here is cracking up incredibly, and over here is just angry and mean and pissed off, then yeah. in the middle is blank, and you've got to run the person one way or the other at all times. And I don't think photographers take responsibility for that. So what happens is the person gets in front of the camera, and they haven't studied or worked. Like I think I believe studying this stuff and working on on, on it on a daily basis is huge. And it they is. haven't studied or worked or done thing and now they get the person in front of the camera and they think their lighting's good and they're good at lighting and you know pressing the shutter button and that's about it and then then there's no life in it it doesn't really jive for me boy here here thank you once again for your generosity and sharing with us your secrets thanks mark i really enjoy talking to you every time i'm on so anytime Same here we'll catch up again real soon if you haven't subscribed be sure to subscribe and enable the bell so you don't miss any episodes like it leave your comments i love you guys stay safe stay well and remember to get out and capture your own images of life